the Supreme Court. They have, of course, a tie up with uh, Taiwan, and they position 2,500 Marines in Northern Australia. They have uh, used Singapore as a base for their LCS, or the uh, littoral combat ship, is a very high tech, uh, fast moving ship. And they're also talking with Thailand. In fact, they're talking with Thailand in order to prevent uh, China from constructing a canal through Thailand, the Kral Canal, so that they can bypass uh, the Malacca Strait. And they warned China to tread carefully in the South China Sea. The U.S. also released their new Asia-Pacific Maritime Security Strategy, which includes partnership with India, asking India to act east, in other words, uh, to look east. Uh, South China Sea is east of uh, India, so that they will have a strategic convergence with the United States to rebalance uh, the situation there. And the U.S. Uh, warned China with more military, humanitarian exercises in the South China Sea. Of course, another part of the emerging coalition is Japan. Japan has an existing conflict with China, and it's a long-standing conflict. Japan said that the South China Sea security impacts on their national interest, and that is the reason why they uh, they restructured their defense program. And for the first time in 70 years since World War II, the new laws would allow Japan to be able to deploy their uh, military outside the territory of Japan if they feel that it is in their national interest. In fact, they came out with uh, new laws uh, so that uh, it will enable them to intervene militarily in the South China Sea. How would they do this? When Japan is attacked or when a close ally is attacked and the result threatens Japan's survival, they can use their military outside the territory of Japan. When there is another, no other appropriate means available to repel the attack and ensure Japan's survival and protect its people. And if the use of force is restricted to a necessary minimum. And I'd like to show you a video on how the Japanese debate in their parliament uh, when they came out with this uh, new defense strategy. <laughs> Japan's military is very strong. In fact, it's uh, one of the strongest in the world. And they can easily make it stronger because of their industrial capacity. They uh, revealed the record defense budget to the tune of about $42 billion. Uh, and this is how the Japan's uh, Japan military power looks like. They have aircraft carriers. They have a big one. They call it a helicopter destroyer. But this is convertible into a true aircraft carrier together with this uh, smaller one. Izumo, the big one, a brand new aircraft carrier. They have submarines, and they're one of the best builders of submarines in the world. They have very modern destroyers, an Aegis class destroyers to Atago, Congo class. And they have a lot of planes. They manufacture their own planes also. 213 Mitsubishi F-15, 89 Mitsubishi F-2, and on order, and they expect to have this uh, delivered starting in 2016. 42 F-35A planes from the United States, the most modern fighter plane in the world right now, plus 28 others to their defense budget. And when they succeed in having this delivered, this can be a game changer in the East China Sea area. And very recently, they showed up their naval power through a fleet review. And in that fleet review, there were vessels participating from India, South Korea, Australia, France, and the United States, including the aircraft carrier, the big aircraft carrier, the USS Ronald Reagan. 
And what is very interesting about this fleet review is that the commander of the third fleet of the United States that is based in San Diego participated in the fleet review when this is a seven fleet area. And in fact, the commander and Lady uh, Admiral uh, stayed in the same ship as Prime Minister Abe. And another participant is India. India already announced that they intend to monitor shipping in the South China Sea. Why? Because the South China Sea is also strategically important for them. They have an oil uh, exploration joint development project with Vietnam for their oil. And they made this very clear announcement. India will not hesitate to use naval powers to protect their economic interests in the South China Sea. How does India's military power look like? Very powerful. They have two aircraft carriers. In fact, they are ahead of, the, of China as far as the use of aircraft carriers. They're even constructing their own aircraft carrier now. Uh, they already lost it. They have Kilo class submarines, they have Akula class uh, submarines, and stealth frigates. In fact, one of them visited the Philippines uh, recently, just about a week ago. This is the indigenous aircraft carrier INS White Rank under construction in India. And, uh, and then they're about ready to move an oil platform into the South China Sea. And if they really do this, this is going to be a very complicated situation because you can expect China is going to resist this. Because China immediately issued a warning. India should rethink its oil exploration plans. But uh, part of the PR, part of the CIWAR, India also displayed uh, the capability by showing this video on CNN. submarines are all already and they're looking at Japan as a source of the new submarines and uh, they raised the uh, opposition to China's aggression in the South China Sea a lot of people were worried when there was a change in government in Australia but immediately the new Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull issued a statement that China is pushing the envelope in the South China Sea in other words stretching over stretching the limit and the lady Defense Minister there announced that Australia will oppose intimidation and aggression. It's a veiled warning to China. There, there's Vietnam. Vietnam, its economy is a lot smaller than the Philippines, but they have a very potent military also. And very recently, they allocated $3.2 billion for the acquisition of six submarines, kilo-class submarines from Russia, and two or three have been deployed already. And as I said earlier, this kilo-class submarine is very modern, can wreak havoc on the PLA Navy. They have airplanes, fighter planes also, Sukhoi from Russia. They have frigates there. And this shows you the disposition of forces. These are the naval combatants in the South Pacific area, in the Asia Pacific area. 303 China 
67 uh, Japan, 61 Indonesia, 37 Vietnam, Malaysia 23, the Philippines 14. <laughs> For the regional maritime law enforcement, these are Coast Guard, fishing vessels, maritime surveillance, the so-called white ships, supposedly civilian, 205 for Japan, uh, for China, 78 for Japan, 55 for Vietnam, 8 for Indonesia, 2 for Malaysia, and 4 for the Philippines. Imagine just 4 to protect uh, the Philippines, uh, the West Philippine Sea. The European Council President also expressed concern about what's happening in the South China Sea. The G7 also voiced a very strong opposition to the South China Sea land reclamation project of China. And then, very surprisingly, in the last uh, foreign minister's meeting, the ASEAN uh, also urged to stand up to Beijing about the South China Sea. So there's a change in the attitude of most of the members of the ASEAN because of the aggressiveness of China. Southeast Asian nations uh, back a halt to run land reclamation in South China Sea. So what is the Philippines doing? Here's what the Philippines is doing. Of course, number one is diplomacy. <laughs> we have a case. We have a case in the permanent court of arbitration. I think we're all aware of that. We are questioning China's aggression in the South China Sea. And uh, we have alliances also. We're strengthening our alliance with, of course, with, through EDCA. And then Japan, India, Australia, and Vietnam. We have the Mutual Defense Treaty. And we have EDCA, which is being uh, reviewed in the Supreme Court right now. And of course, we are very much aware of the danger posed by the strategic triangle of China. Japan, Philippines, and now let's talk of AFP modernization. If you ask me what we need, and experts from the United States agree with me, we need anti-access area denial, or AAAD, weapon systems, and swarm tactics. What does that mean? It means the use of small but cost-effective weapon systems. So in my opinion, we should acquire second-hand frigates so that they are immediately available. Acquire missile boats, missile-capable multi-purpose attack uh, uh, craft, and land-based missiles, especially in the Palawan area. I was so happy when the government announced in 2012 that they were going to acquire two Maestrale second-hand ships from Italy. And this was supposed to be delivered 2013. They're not exactly new, but they're good enough so that uh, they can work in, uh, in a joint exercise with modern navies like the US Navy. And uh, another proposition is small missile boats like the ones used by Iran in the Persian Gulf to neutralize the US Navy, the Hayabusa class uh, uh, missile boat from Japan, and an array of land based missiles. And, uh, one of the more potent would be the Brahmos missiles from India. India produces very good weapons. But unfortunately, this was scrapped, the second hand. And in its place was to order brand new frigates from a budget of 16 billion to 18 billion. But the problem with the brand new frigates is that they're new, they're good, but they're not here. They'll be available maybe three, four years from now. And right now, until now, they have not finalized the order to the shielding study. And then uh, we also ordered uh, 12 uh, FA-50 uh, fighter jets from uh, Korea. Korea is uh, a very good manufacturer of fighter jets. But again, the problem is that they will be delivered, two will be delivered before the end of the year. And the rest, it may take about two to three years. In spite of the fact that the National Security Advisor, uh, General Garcia, in a formal hearing, announced that right now the South China Sea is the biggest security threat facing the Philippines. And with that announcement, what the Army did was to cancel their shore-based missile system project, which could have been very, very important as, a, as an anti-access weapon. And in this place, the Philippine Army decided to buy helmets and vests for internal defense. <laughs> It would be good, it would be good to have uh, surface missiles because if I were a ship commander, let's say I were a ship commander of a hostile uh, fleet, I would think twice if I know that there are missiles hidden there. So 